Hey guys, this is Cooking with Kurt and today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious mango chiffon naked layer cake. As the name suggests, this cake doesn't have any frosting on the sides and all the layers and fillings are exposed. This cake is inspired by Red Ribbon's Mango Supreme. To start, preheat your oven to 340 degrees Fahrenheit and take two half sheet pans and line the bottoms with parchment paper. We're not going to grease or oil the parchment paper or the sides of the pans since we want the chiffon cakes to climb up the sides so they're light and airy. Then in a large non-reactive bowl like glass or stainless steel, sift in 2 and 1 4 cups of cake flour, 1 tablespoon of baking powder, half a cup of sugar, and 1 teaspoon of salt. Then add in 8 egg yolks, half a cup of canola oil, 3 4 cup of water, 1 teaspoon of finely grated lemon zest, 1 teaspoon of finely grated orange zest, and 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mix this together with an electric mixer until they are just combined and smooth. Now like with all chiffon cakes, we're going to make a meringue mixture. In a separate bowl, beat together 8 egg whites and 1 teaspoon of cream of tartar using an electric beater on high speed. Slowly add in 3 fourths cup of sugar and continue beating in this mixture until you start to see stiff glossy peaks forming like this. Then we're going to gently fold in our meringue mixture into the cake mixture about one third of the meringue at a time until they are completely combined. Be sure to fold it slowly and gently so we don't knock out any of that air we've beaten into the meringue. When they're completely combined, we're going to divide this batter equally into the two rectangular sheet pans we had prepared earlier. We're going to let these bake in our preheated oven at 340 degrees Fahrenheit for, depending on your oven, about 23 to 25 minutes or till it is light golden brown and the cake springs back when touched lightly at the center. Cool the sheet cakes in the pans, sitting on metal racks to cool faster. While the cakes are cooling, we can work on the mangoes and frosting. First, to make the mango filling and topping, take 5 ripe mangoes and slice the sides around the seed so you have 10 mango halves and 5 seeds. Then take 6 out of the 10 mango halves and slice the mangoes into small squares using what I call the crisscross method. Cut the mangoes all the way down to the skin, making a crisscross pattern with the size of the cubes that you want. Then with a spoon, just scoop the mango out. Place the mangoes in a saucepan, add 1 4 cup of sugar, 1 tablespoon of cornstarch, and 2 thirds cup of water. Mix it around and bring to a boil. Once it's boiling, Cook and stir for another 1 or 2 minutes. When this mango compote has thickened, transfer it into a bowl and let it cool completely. We're going to reserve this mango compote for the cake topping. Next, take the remaining 4 mango halves and similarly, slice them into small squares. But this time, place them into a blender. Take the 5 mango seeds and do your best to cut the flesh off the sides of the seeds and add these mango scraps to the blender as well. This way nothing gets wasted. Add 1 4 cup of sugar and we're going to blend this together. If necessary, you can add water 1 tablespoon at a time as needed. But try to add as little water as possible, otherwise the mango filling will become too runny. If you have nice ripe mangoes, hopefully you won't need to add any water at all. Reserve this mango puree for the cake filling. Next, we're going to make the frosting. In a large mixing bowl, add 8 ounces of cold cream cheese, half a cup of sugar, and 2 teaspoons of vanilla extract. Fit the mixer with a whisk attachment and mix it on medium speed until smooth. While continuing to whip it on medium speed, slowly pour in 2 cups of gold heavy cream. Continue whipping it until the cream is thick and billowy. When you get the right consistency, stop whipping. It doesn't have to form stiff peaks since we're not going to be piping this frosting or putting it in the sides of the cake. But do make sure that the ingredients are cold and be careful not to over whip it. When you whip it past a certain point, it starts to form this grainy or clumpy consistency. If that does happen to you, one way to fix it is to quickly add in additional heavy cream, make sure it's cold, one tablespoon at a time, and then manually whisk it in with a whisk to combine. Uh, if you do this quickly enough and it hasn't become too clumpy yet, the texture should return to a smooth and thick cream. When you've stopped whipping, add 1 teaspoon of finely grated lemon zest and 1 teaspoon of finely grated orange zest and manually fold it in with a spoon. Set this frosting aside in the fridge. 
Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions about this step because it can be tricky. I'm more than happy to troubleshoot and figure out any issues you might have. Now when our cakes are completely cooled, take some parchment paper, cut two big rectangles big enough for each sheet cake and place them on a flat surface. Gently run a knife along the sides of the cakes and invert them onto the parchment paper you just prepped so the cakes are upside down. The cakes should slip off the pans pretty easily when you invert them. Then immediately, peel off the parchment paper that was lining the bottom of the pan. Take a 9 inch metal cake ring and press it into the cake and twist it to make one full cake round and then another half cake round on each cake sheet. So each cake sheet will make one and a half cake rounds. There should be some leftover cake to fill in the gaps when necessary. You definitely don't need all the leftover scraps, so it's safe to eat a little bit of it if you want. Mmm, yum! The two full rounds will be the top two out of three cake layers. And then the two half rounds will be put together to make the bottom layer. Now we're ready to assemble the cake. Take whatever cake board or cake stand you'd like to use to serve the cake. I'll be using my usual glass serving plate with a dome cover. Place the 9 inch metal cake ring at the center of the serving plate. Then we're going to take an acetate sheet like this. The roll already comes 4 inches high and I'm going to cut it about 12 inches long. And using the metal cake ring as an outer shell, create a circle with a 4 inch high acetate sheet so that it is the same circumference as the metal ring on the inside of the metal cake ring. Then take the two half cake rounds and place them together in the ring to create the bottom layer of cake. If you see there are uneven spaces or gaps in the middle or the sides, you can fill them in with the leftover cake scraps so that the bottom layer is as flat and circular as possible. Spread one third of the frosting on top. Make sure you get it all the way to the edges touching the acetate sheet, moving in a figure eight or circular motion to make it as flat and as even as possible. Then spread half of the mango puree on top in the same way, really making sure it goes all the way to the acetate sheet. Also, be careful of the cake ring sliding around the surface, especially if you're using a glass plate. If you see that it's slided from the center, try to adjust it back as soon as possible because it's much more difficult to center it once the cake is done. Next, take one of the full cake rounds and place it on top as the second layer of cake. Gently tap it down with the back of your hand to make sure the layers are snug without squishing the layer below. This will make the layers look good with no awkward gaps in between. Then again, spread one third of the frosting on top and then the last half of the mango puree on top, just like with the previous layer. Then take the last full cake round and place it on top as the third and final layer of cake. Gently tap it down like before. We're going to add the final third of the frosting on top and smooth it out as flat and evenly as possible. And for the final layer, spread the mango compote on top over the frosting, spreading the mango chunks evenly on the surface. Just like with the inner layers, make sure you spread them all the way to the sides and touching the acetate sheet. And then finish off the red ribbon design by adding one maraschino cherry in the middle. But we're not yet done. We have to put this in the freezer for at least three hours or in the fridge overnight to set. If you're using the freezer, transfer to the fridge for at least one hour before serving it so it can soften up a bit. When it's set and you're ready to serve it, the last step is to carefully slip the metal ring off and then slowly peel off the acetate sheet, exposing all the layers of this beautiful mango chiffon naked layer cake. And there you have it, mango supreme cake. Yum. It's so light, delicious, and refreshing. Mmm. Masara. Please let me know in the comment section below if you're planning to make this mango supreme cake. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Cooking with Kurt. Maraming salamat!